Hello friends, welcome to engineering tutorial. So we'll continue our discussion with power systems engineering. So, so far we have discussed various introductory concepts, uh, the basic principle of power generation, generation of electrical energy, the various sources of energy uh, for power, of power generation and the various factors that affect the setting up of a power plant. So in this video, we are going to discuss uh, about energy, some basic concepts related to it and uh, the units that are used in order to, you know, represent uh, the output of a power plant and the efficiency concept. Okay, so the Power systems engineering, we all know that uh, it deals with four main aspects from power generation, power transmission and distribution, switch gear and protection and the economic con considerations. So all of these aspects in order to quantify, to represent, to give it a number value, we need some kind of units, okay, in order to evaluate uh, how much power is generated, what is its efficiency, then uh, about the various uh, cost aspects and uh, all the other things. So first, what is energy? Now we all know energy is defined as the capacity of an agent to do work and uh, the th important forms of energy that are uh, the, which come into play in power generation are the mechanical energy, electrical energy and thermal energy. So depending on which kind of a power plant is used, these three energies uh, we need to represent it in their own units. We all know that the basic principle of power generation is to convert energy from source into some kind of a mechanical energy, some mechanical motion using prime mover and then to convert it into electrical energy into uh, with the help of a alternator which is a AC electrical generator. So we need to have a good understanding about the various forms of energy in order to represent them in their respective units. So mechanical energy. So the unit of mechanical energy is Newton meter or joule in SI or MK system and we can define it uh, one joule or one newton meter as the work done on a body if a force of one newton moves the body through a distance of one meter. So if one newton moves a body through a distance of one meter then that is called as energy of one newton meter or one joule. Okay. So, mechanical energy joule is force into distance or displacement as it is called. 1 joule, 1 newton into 1 meter. Next is electrical energy. The unit of electrical energy is watt second or joule again. Also it is called in electrical form. So, 1 watt second or 1 joule we can define it as the energy transferred between two points if a current of one ampere is passed between the two points which are maintained or which, are, which have a potential difference of one volt for one second. So for one second we pass a current of one ampere in between two points maintained at a potential difference of one volt. Okay. So that is one watt second or one joule in electrical form, the electrical energy, which is volt into current into time, VIT. So one joule is one volt into one ampere into one second. That is electrical energy, the unit. Now, the joule or watt second, which is used in electrical energy, it is a very small unit to be used for practical purposes. So bigger units like watt hour or kilowatt hour are used. 
so what is this watt hour or kilowatt hour so mostly you will find these units kilowatt hour in uh, in practical purposes okay so one watt hour simply one watt into one hour one watt into one hour is 60 minutes one minute is 60 seconds so 60 into 60 3600 seconds so which is 3600 watt second one watt hour also one kilowatt hour is simply one kilowatt into one hour one kilowatt is 1000 watt one hour is again 3600 seconds so it becomes 36 into 10 to the power 5 watt second okay the kilowatt hour and watt hour next is thermal energy or heat so basic definition of heat is that it is a form of energy that produces the sensation of warmth so this comes into play in thermal power plants uh, involving coal and other fuels such as natural gas so the unit of heat are uh, calorie uh, british thermal units bthu and centigrade heat unit chu so calorie and kilocalorie so calorie is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of one gram of water through one degree celsius so one calorie is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of one gram of water through one degree celsius kilocalorie is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of one kilogram of water through one degree celsius okay one kg into one degree celsius one kilocalorie now british thermal units and centigrade heat unit so this is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of one pound of water through one degree fahrenheit okay one bthu one pound into one degree fahrenheit centigrade heat unit is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of one pound of water through one degree celsius so one chu is one pound into one degree celsius now normally you will find that uh, we use kilocalorie units the british thermal units and centigrade heat units are no longer used they have become obsolete outdated so mostly you will find that the kilocalorie or the calorie and basically the kilocalorie kcal is used mostly so the various uh, relationship among the energy units uh, first the electrical and mechanical one kilowatt hour is 36 into 10 to the power 5 joules thermal and mechanical one calorie is around 4.18 joules one centigrade heat unit is 1896 joules and one british thermal unit is 1053 joules okay so basically you will find the si and the mks units used these days and uh, British thermal unit and centigrade heat units are no longer used. So these are the basic concepts related to the energy units uh, for various calculation purposes. So you should have a good understanding about it. So another concept related to all of these discussions that we did related to energy is efficiency so it is a very important factor uh, while considering the output of a power plant or rating a power plant so basically efficiency is the ratio between the output that we get as compared to the input that we provide so in terms of energy we can uh, express efficiency as the ratio between output energy and input energy now we know that power is the rate of energy flow or the rate at which energy is utilized it's expanded so we can also write efficiency as output power by input power in terms of percentage it is output power by input power into 100 now the efficiency of power plants i have already told this in the video related to the various factors affecting the setting up of power plant that no system is 100% efficient the efficiency of every system out there in this world is less than 100 now when it comes to power plants you'll be surprised to know that the 
the the power plants which contribute to the bulk of the power generation which is the fuel power plants that is coal and natural gas and the nuclear power plants their efficiency lies in between 25 to 45 percent for fuel power plants it is 25 to 35 percent for nuclear power plants it is around 35 to 45 percent the efficiency the hydro power plants they are around 85 percent efficient so if you see what it means that is for fuels and nuclear power plants we get only 25 to 45 percent of the output as compared to that of the input only 25 to 45 percent okay and these are the power plants that contribute to the bulk of the power generation so imagine if we could exceed even by 10 percent or 20 percent of this imagine how much excess power we can generate so in the future we have to rely on uh, the hydro the water and sun and nuclear power plants so because the fuels coal natural gas they're depleting at a rapid rate so and if technologies improve we come up with new innovative ways uh, this efficiency can be increased okay so this is all about efficiency so i hope you like this video and please subscribe my channel engineering tutorial for more such videos related to engineering science and technology have a great day thank you very much